Hey guys, I've got a uh, request from Hussein on the <laughs> in the comments saying he wants to see more losses. So um, I'm going to try and lose. Not really. <laughs> Just can you analyse some of your losses? I did have a loss yesterday. It's against someone like 1100. So this is the French advanced variation. I'm generally happy with this. Okay. So what White's doing here is he's getting extra space, getting control particularly of the f6 square and also of d6. But uh, this isn't now my target, this d4 pawn. And I can attack it bringing my knight out, so now it's got two attackers, right? Two attackers, two defenders. And this is very normal, but there is a tactic here, okay? This is very, very common if you play the French, and particularly the French advance, okay? Now, the issue here is that I can actually take that pawn for free, okay? If he takes back, I get the bishop, and I'm up a pawn. If he takes my bishop, I take back with the knight. So this is very, very standard pattern that you need to know he's blocked that, so he's done well there. Um, also adding a third defender to this pawn. Now, I can't pin the knight. I'm going to try and stop off my bishop. This is another theme in the French. Um, in the French defence, when you are black and you've got a load of bunch of pieces on light squares and white consequently has a bunch of pieces on dark squares, um, then your light squared bishop is a bad piece, right? Because it can't get through any of of this side of the board, right? Uh, however, your opponent's light squared bishop is better. So if you can swap off your light squared bishop for theirs, not a bad thing. Now, b5, he could just go here, push. He's gonna end up back on c2, whatever happens. So I'm thinking this bishop is less of a threat where he is now than he would be on c2 where he's looking down at h7, yeah? So why waste a move or two, kicking that bishop up the board, uh, only to force him to a better square? So that's my thought process. Now, uh, queen here is, a, is a, quite a typical move. That adds a third attacker to this pawn, but the pawn, remember, is defended three times, so... Um, I'm going to play, I'm thinking bishop here. Getting ready to castle. So there is this other classic pawn break in the French, which is f6. And I think that's better against the French advance, I, I think. And if takes, you've got knight takes. Okay. And you've eliminated your own f-pawn. But in return for his central e-pawn. Okay, so I'm going to play this now. If he takes, I take back with the knight. Then I'm going to castle and I'm going to my rook on a semi-open file. Whereas his rook is looking at the back of his own pawn's head. So small, subtle differences, I think. And that's what chess is all about. Now, Alexander, 190360, needs to find a way to beat me. Otherwise, Hussein is going to be upset. Okay, he's taken. So obviously I have options here. I think knight takes is, is the most natural. Bishop takes doesn't really make sense. It, it deprives my knight of a natural route out. Plus, this bishop is always here waiting to see if d takes c5. So I'm going to recapture with the knight. Then I'm going to get back into safety. And then we're going to play chess. And see, this bishop... I don't have to worry about this bishop right now. Brilliant. Okay, that's that's absolutely fine. That's what I want to see. Okay, so my bishop's now lined up with his king. The knight is currently pinned on the queen. Um, so I think castles now makes sense. It means that there's another defender um, on the pawn, but more importantly, it means my queen can just bugger off in another direction. Possibly now b6, and the reason why b6 is because this bishop's just flown out. Okay. 
Now, I have two threats. Boom and Badaboom, winning the exchange and a pawn. Now, my opponent ought to, rated 1335, ought to spot both and ought to judge that this is the greater of the two threats. And I'm thinking maybe drop the bishop back to here might be an idea. Then we might trade bishops and I might grab a pawn and threaten a rook and threaten a pawn. Well, I'm not really threatening that pawn, is it? Okay, there you go. So he's seen it. Good, good, good. This is what we want. Okay, now my knight isn't pinned because this bishop's defended by that knight. Okay. Now, I've got takes. And I think rook takes is what's most likely because pawn takes would leave him with an isolated pawn. Um, so takes, rook takes, queen takes b2, winning a pawn. Then we've got an isolated c pawn and an isolated a pawn, and I'm attacking the rook. And the only way I think to save the rook is knight here. And then I get another pawn, eh? Oh no, I don't because there's a rook here. I need to be careful about that. So. Um, let's go ahead and take there. It's a nice kind of lesson in the French, this. At least in the French advance. Because all the typical themes seem to be coming out. And still, this light squared bishop is there with its finger up its bum. Okay, as we predicted, rook takes. Okay, so now free pawn. But let's just check it. Got 16 minutes, that's heaps of time, right? Okay. Take there. I'm threatening the rook. The only way to save the rook is to bring the knight to here. Okay, so if my queen's on there and the knight's on there, what does that look like? Okay. Don't think knight here makes any sense at all. Because he could just trade off and then I'd double my pawns, that's a mess. Um, I could actually hassle the rook this way. Can't go there, there, there. Can't stay there. Has to, to go either there or a tree, okay. Um, does that improve my knight? Uh, I can't, I don't have, knight's defending that, so one thought I was thinking is could I drop my queen back? And then with my knight here, hit the rook, rook goes away, and then that'd be nice, but can't do that because the knight's defended. So can we do something maybe about the knight? How about e5, e4? Is that a thought? Or do we just go ahead and take the pawn now? Um, let's go ahead and take the pawn now because it's free stuff. Okay, he's seen that. Okay, and now I'm just gonna drop the queen all the way back here. No worries. We might get rook b1, queen down to here. That means that this knight is going to be busy defending that h2 square. And then I think this, this pawn advance in the centre makes more sense. Notice that white has no d or e pawns. Here, white's pawns are actually poor. Yes, he's got decent cover around the king, but he's got an isolated a pawn and an isolated c pawn. I've got less around my king, but actually... The disappearance of Freddy is not necessarily a bad thing because it gives my rook more scope in the game. I also have a pair of pawns on A and B and a, more importantly, a pair of pawns in the middle of the board. So he's preventing my knight from coming here and attacking the rook. Yeah, I get that. Now, if I push here, can't take, take, doesn't work. Should I centralize maybe the A rook first? Maybe get the A rook on there, All right? So think about, in general, improving the position of pieces before, okay, so attacking my queen, yeah, before the pawn breaks. Line up your big guns behind your infantry before the infantry go forward, All right? You don't send the infantry forward and then bring out your big guns. Things happen in order. Okay, queen's defending the bishop. That's undefended. That's undefended. So is this a thought? 
can't see anything really wrong with that. Oh, no, no, it's not. Under it's totally defended by the rook. Okay, let's just drop the queen back here, then. Still, the bishop is awkward. I'd have to be careful with something like that, you see. In fact, I can't do that anyway, because there's two attackers on that square. But I've got to be careful. Uh, oh, no, because look, this bishop is not just defended by the queen, but also by the knight. Okay, because I was worried that my queen would be over um, busy, overextended. Okay. That's surely a stupid blunder. I take, if rook takes, queen takes. Now if he takes my bishop, my knight is defending the bishop. Surely it's just a blunder. Sorry, Hussein. Not today, my friend. Alexander, what have you done? He spent 33 seconds figuring that out and didn't figure it out enough. Now again, same situation. If he wants to take now, I've got a choice of three pieces that can take, but my knight with the old triangular defence can uh, come back. I think he's realised. I think he's going, oh no. I don't understand. I don't understand. Yeah, mate, it's rough. Why did you do that? So I got up this morning when I was having my breakfast, watched uh, Magnus Carlsen's speed run. Pointless. Utterly pointless. Watching a super grandmaster playing Blitz. You know, and, and he's deliberately playing stupid opening as well. He's playing this um, Greek opening. He, he He's like moving his king's pawn, then moving his king up, and then moving his king back on purpose, losing two tempi, and still going on to beat people. Fide masters, international masters. Okay. That's hanging. Okay, he's grabbed a pawn. Do I trade bishops? This is attacked twice and defended only once. Uh, that's hanging. That brings his queen to a4. Is that a problem? Well, no, because I, I have queen here. And that wins the knight. So... Is this, see how that... Just spending that little bit of extra time... No, it doesn't win the knight, because he's got knight f1. Okay, so am I going to bother with that move at all? Uh, knight f1, could take this with the queen, currently up an entire rook, with a, a pawn that's about to meet its maker, but let's take that with the queen, it means I've got nice pairing, this rook's well defended now, not bothered about this pawn, I'm currently threatening his knight, that's more important, his knight can't go there. Um... I think maybe I'd like to bring my knight in here as well with an attacking idea. Let's um, see if his knight moves away. I've got knight in there. Queen here. Ah! He's moved back to a good square. Now, queen there. He can't block with a knight. Previously he could have moved his knight back there, but now his knight can only block there, and that don't work because it gets took. So. Um, knight here, I think that's got to be played, whatever happens. Knight there, I've got queen here, king to there. I mean, I'm attacking this pawn anyway. I've also got the ideas of rook takes knight, sack the rook. Boom, badder, boom, that's got to be kind of winning and then I've still got a rook that can fly in that's it's worth consideration eh? sack the rook 
Exactly the exchange takes check, and I've got two attackers on there. So the king's going to go there, there, or there, whichever it doesn't really matter because queen takes f2. And I'm threatening knight there, mate. And I don't think white's even got a check. Okay, you're following along with this. Rook takes pawn to. Oof. Okay, now, so he's, that's a decent response. Queen here, king has to go there. I get a free pawn. What's not to like? I can also bring my rook from c8 to c2 maybe. Okay, let's try that. Key here is I, I really need to be careful not to disconnect my rooks unnecessarily. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Am I? Or is there something better? Is there anything better? This might force an exchange. That kind of simple, I kind of, hmm, kind of like that idea. So I'm threatening either to take his rook. His rook can't attack my queen there or there. Can't take the knight now because rook can take rook. That doesn't help my campaign. <coughs> <coughs> or is there a better fork? I think there's a better fork, boys and girls. You see the difference in like seeing a reasonable move and just doing it. So my first idea was knight takes pawn, free pawn, okay. Second idea was knight to here with a fork on knight and rook, forcing the knight to take, queen retakes, we've simplified. But then I looked again, and then I saw this, which should win material. And again, he can't play rook there and attack my queen, or rook there and attack my queen. His knight can't attack my queen, because it's on the wrong color. Right, it's on the opposite color. For the knight to move and attack my queen, my knight would have to be on the same color square as my queen now. And if he wants to trade queens, uh, so be it. That really simplifies matters. It's a better simplification. It's a higher magnitude of simplification, eh? So, it seems like the whole game is pretty much uh, flipped on one blunder. Um, I, I, if I was white here, I think queen a3 is the move. But he hasn't done that, okay? Don't get that move. Okay, I'm going to, I've got to check here or here. I'm inclined to put my queen on f4. If he pushes a pawn, so be it. Uh, if he pushes a pawn, he loses his, his knight, right? It's the second defender of that, yeah. And that, boys and girls, is the difference between 1300 and 1500. Let's do a quick review. I'm not going to use the computer. Okay, so French players. French advance. I'm normally happy to see the French advance. I don't think you see it as often at the top level. And a part of that, I think, is it kind of overextends white. Okay, and, and look, you're using your third move to move a pawn you've already moved. Now, if my knight had come out here, oops, not there, here, right? Then the pawn move kicks the knight, you're not losing a tempo. But this is effectively losing a tempo. Okay, and you can see later on my opponent blinks and captures the pawn. Never do that as white, because it, it brings my bishop out into the game. Okay, but that doesn't happen for a while. So, knight c6, bishop pins, break the pin. Okay, and then remember we've got this tactic of there, if bishop takes, we've just won ourselves a pawn. There, if pawn takes knight, same difference. Okay, um, and then suddenly your light square bishop becomes rather good because it's on a very good diagonal and preventing white from castling. Okay, now he brings his knight out, and that's a good move because he's saving this pawn. Right, so I'm thinking my opponent's doing well here. We've got a live one. Okay. 
kick the bishop, bishop retreats once, and then I'm thinking, nah, I'd, I'm, I'm happy with that bishop sitting there. Let's play on, let's develop. Bishop e7. Um, now, he's kind of, it, it's, it sometimes seems like a, a wasted move, right? Because then if pawn takes, you have to move your bishop again. But I think in this case, it's all right, okay? And now he takes, and I'll take with the knight, now he takes the pawn, right? And suddenly, my bishop goes from here, which is not the best place in the world for a bishop, right? Second rank is not great for a bishop, in general. Um, and now my bishop goes here, where it's going, pew, pew, you know? Sniper style. Could even drop back here if he wanted to, you know? And remain lined up with that king. Plus, my opponent has just given up his remaining central pawn. Right? He's captured here, and he's now he's captured here. So he's given up both his central pawns and allowed me to do this. Now, does that prove significant? Let's find out. Bishop flies out, attacking that, doesn't matter. Castles just improves my position. Rook's there, doesn't matter. Let's attack a pawn. Okay? Bishop retreats. Um, because this is now two attacks. Because he's moved his rook here. He's weakened this square, all right? That pawn was defended twice previously. Now it's only defended by the king. So a barrage against that square, the king is no defense at all. The king cannot be the last defender. So this, 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 and you've lost yourself a pawn. Okay, that's not the end of the world. We can play on. That's forced, queen retreats. Now h3, slight sign of nerves, okay? And before I think about pushing pawns up the board, I want to activate my pieces, okay? Notice this rook is still relatively inactive. So now he activates his rook, queen c7. Knight comes in, and it's simply a blunder. He's put his knight on a square where it's attacked twice and defended only once. Now, maybe he was thinking, because I, I noticed this before he did it, right? Maybe he was thinking that if knight takes, um, I don't know, queen takes, this bishop is somehow undefended, but it isn't. It's defended by that, that knight there. So he just loses a minor piece outright and then makes it worse by recapturing the rook and losing the bloody rook. You wally. Right? So at this point, he's... For he's a, a knight and a pawn down. Now he's a rook and a pawn down. He's doubled down on his mistake. And I've got a queen and a rook looking at this pawn. Now, now he grabs a free pawn. Whoop de doo, good for you. All right? I trade off bishops. I grab the pawn. Okay, so I'm still plus six. Now the knight comes here. Now my knight comes in, generally improves itself, also opens up possibilities for the f rook tax the queen check here fork loses another exchange check and this move was made in two seconds just didn't think it through right he's in check this knight is currently defended twice by queen and g pawn with g3 it's defended once and he resigns okay and in the end, these two pawns weren't needed uh, because he, he lost basically on, on basics, on tactics. So there you go. Uh, nice little lesson for the French there if you're a French player as black. Um, also very much kind of, yeah, like I say, highlights the difference that those 200 rating points can make. Um, I think both of us played reasonably well. And like I've said in previous videos, as you climb in rating, the quality of your mistakes changes. That, that's all it is, right? Um, but something I'm happy about in that game was the times, and I finished with 10 minutes left on the clock in a 20 minute game. I did not rush that game, okay? However, when I saw that there was a critical point in the game, I slowed down. I saw one reasonable move, okay? That's a candidate move. Let's put it on the table. Then I saw another one. Let's put that next to it. And then we'll consider, okay? You don't rush. It's like going out buying a car. 
you know, going, yeah, I want that one. That'll do. You know? You say, okay, well, I quite like that, quite like that, quite, you know, and then decide. And then I saw, actually, well, bugger me. There's a fork on Queen and Rook. So, sold. You know? There you go. That's all it takes. Um, we all process at different speeds, depending on your experience, your age, your general IQ, you know, all of that, your chess knowledge, how much tactics you've trained, all that kind of stuff. We all process at different speeds. So we should all be playing a level of chess or, or a time format of chess um, that allows us at least to, um, if you're a slow thinker, don't be playing bullet and three minute blitz. It's just you're just practicing playing bad chess. Um, for me, 20 minute format works, 10 minute format works. Five minutes, I'm just not as good. I'm a 1300 at blitz playing five minute games. Um, I'm, I, I'm much more effective when I've got more time to think. You know, I used nine and a half minutes, my opponent used nine minutes. Um, but the difference is that he, he lost two pieces, right? That's all it is. Big mistakes, okay? Now, um, if you're 1,000 or 800 or 600, you make different mistakes. You lose pieces more easily than he lost his pieces today. Um, but, you know, everyone makes mistakes. They're just of a different quality uh, over time. That's it. Okay, guys, so hope that's been useful for you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you soon.